What's up everybody? So today we are going to design and prototype within Figma a button that also has a drop down menu. Now that sounds simple enough, but there's a lot of considerations that we need to consider essentially. And I'm gonna be talking about all those. So this is also pretty involved in terms of using the features of Figma in terms of creating components, component variants, uh, auto layout and stuff like that. So as always, make sure to subscribe and let's get started. Now, chances are, if you're watching this video, you probably want to be a better designer. And if that's the case, how much do you really want it? Because at designcourse.com, I've created a UI UX course that will help you go from designing layouts that I might rate a four or five up to eight and beyond. But more important than that, as a better designer, this means that you can land higher paying clients and jobs. This course includes over 16 hours of video, 40 interactive UI design tests, and even mentorship where I personally take a look at your work that you submit, I review it, and many times I also revise it, providing you with great feedback to help you become a better designer. Now, for this video, I want you to use the coupon code UI2022, and that will give you 22% off at checkout. All right, let's go ahead here and get started. Let's go to the frame tool. We'll just choose, choose a desktop for this, even though we don't have a full design. We're only gonna be designing a button here. All right, so um, the first thing we'll do is just go ahead and just get a rectangle by hitting the R key and something around the size of a button. You know, I'm gonna make this a little bit larger than it normally would, even on desktop, just so we can kind of see everything. Uh, we'll hit T for the type tool and we'll get some button type. So additional actions is going to be our button. All right, so um, let's beef that up to a size of uh, just around 18. So it's not even all that big. Um, and then we'll put this here. Um, you know what, I think we'll go 20. There we go. And then what we'll do is we're gonna go to um, the community section. So if I switch to community, I'm gonna search for, uh, actually, let me go back. Let me. I don't wanna go to the community. I wanna go to, uh, yes, Basil icons. So you can go to the community and type that in. It's a free icon set. Um, and these are all designed you know, consistently, which is what you want for your icons. We're gonna choose this option right here. All right, so we're gonna copy that and we're just gonna paste this and we're gonna put it right around there. I think that's pretty good right there. And we'll probably get this centered up. There we go. I'm gonna make sure everything is centered and aligned well. So um, what we'll do is just with these two in mind, we're just gonna go ahead and group them up. Control G. And then we're gonna take this background here and we're gonna take the, this element as well, the group, and we are just going to auto layout it. And that way we can also center a line by clicking right there in the center. So right there. Okay, so that way when we move this around, it'll stay in the center. All right, now additionally, um, you can notice there's a little bit more white space on the left here. That's because of this little icon. It has like a, an overall container. So we could uh, actually reduce that right around there just to make it a little bit more obvious or, or even rather probably even stand to do that just a tad bit more. Okay, um, we're gonna also change the background color because this is looking pretty boring. Um, so what we could do is we'll go ahead to fill. We're gonna choose like a blue color, maybe around, eh, maybe desaturated it, eh, just a tad bit, right around there. So the color code uh, for that, if we're using hex, is gonna be 61A5E3, if you wanna follow along. Finally, we're gonna do one more thing, just give it, uh, give the frame here itself a border radius, prior around seven. All right, all right, so we're good to go right here so far. Um, now what we wanna do is we're gonna go ahead and take this and convert it into a keyframe, or a component, not a keyframe. What am I thinking? Thinking of different applications right now, a component itself. And then we will click the plus icon up here to add a variant. Now, just for now, I'm gonna go ahead and just move, yeah, we'll just move it off. Uh, actually, we'll move it off entirely and then just hit F for the frame tool, wrap that in its own frame as well. Okay, so the only uh, interaction we're gonna have on this one is just a hover state. So when we double click this, the bottom one, uh, variant two, we can rename to hover, by the way, over here under the property one current variant section. And then we'll take the fill and we're just gonna make it uh, lighter 
like that. We don't want it to go too light and make it make a massive difference. I don't like that for hover effects. More subtle is better. You could also go slightly darker. It's sort of up to you. For me, I think it makes more sense just to go lighter to highlight it even more and increase the contrast. Um, after you have that, we're gonna go to prototype and we're just gonna take this, drag it there, change this from on click to while hovering. We can switch over to assets. We'll go to frame two, drag that on over there to our main artboard and we'll get this centered up here vertically and horizontally. And if we go ahead to click play, it should work. There we go. That's exactly what we want for that. Even that's still kind of like a big difference. I may actually go back and just kind of revert that first back to where it was originally and then just slightly drop it up. There we go. Okay. So now we can get to the drop down menu portion. So let's go ahead and take our rectangle and we're just gonna dra uh, drag an area exactly the same size as the element above it. Um, this will also have a border or corner radius of seven. And the color here is uh, not entirely up to you. There are some objectively bad choices, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna make the background white and then we're going to add an effect of a drop shadow now the blur we're gonna increase quite a bit. Uh, I'm not sure, we'll try uh, 15, 14 or so for right now. Um, let's see, actually I might try 20. Yeah, and that's actually pretty decent uh, in and of itself. So we could experiment with the, uh, the opacity, increasing or decreasing, maybe just offset slightly, the X value is four, and there you go. The actual container doesn't have to be high contrast based on the background it's sitting on. It could be something like this. I, you could be, you know, you, you really want the focus to be on the type, which should be high contrast, which will be inside. Okay, so now what we'll do is we're going to take our type tool. We're gonna to type in um, add member. So that'll be one option. Wow, Gary, come on, type. I did just wake up like 30 minutes ago. <laughs> All right, so. Let's go back to our base wall icon set and we're gonna use the plus, all right? And we're going to put that right here. We're gonna make sure everything's lined up above as well. Okay, so now for this, we're gonna take this and we're, both of these elements and we're going to auto layout it, all right? And then what we're gonna do is we're going to create an actual component out of it. Oh, no we're not, I forgot one little thing. We're gonna take the rectangle tool and um, before we move this up, there we go. Uh, we are going to take the rectangle tool and we're gonna give it a background. Initially it's gonna be white so you're not gonna see it. However, we are going to um, make it show up on hover. So um, the, the quarter radius of this element and this element are seven, all right? And so this is a, a child element of this element because it's sitting inside of it, right? I see people get this wrong. Sometimes they'll make this corner radius larger. I Typically you wanna go smaller than the parent, like four. So if this is seven, we can go four here and it just scales down nicely. Just a quick tip there. Um, let's go back to our layers. We're going to put this underneath. Uh, this is rectangle, let's see here. That's called frame three, okay. So we'll put it underneath frame three. Now, when it's on a hover state, we'll probably be rural, you know, again, a small change from the default white to this. I think I like that pretty good. Once you have that, we're gonna take both of those elements and we're gonna auto lay out those as well. Now I'm gonna just put this right back to where it was. All right, so now we're gonna go to um, our basal icons. We're gonna grab the X one because we're gonna have a, a few more icons that are a part of this. We're gonna have three different options and one of them is gonna be to delete a member. And so we're just gonna throw this right there. All right, and then for now we're gonna hide it. Now you're gonna see why we're, we're doing this here in a second. Um, actually, I'll leave it there for now. And then the other one we're gonna have, the third option is gonna be uh, syncing a member, whatever that might mean in the context of an app. So uh, we'll throw that. I, uh, why are you not showing up? Let me do this. We'll take this one. We're going to hide it. Then we'll add this one and we're gonna hide that one as well. You'll see why I did this in a second, but let's first create the component. So now we have a component out of this and 
Let's go to um, also create a component variant. And we're gonna do a hover state. So we will take this one, the default background color is actually gonna be white. So then we take this into prototype while hovering. There we go. Now we'll go back to our assets and drag that back on. Now, just to make sure we have these things lined up correctly first, we're gonna go ahead and take our uh, property one and change it to variant two. That's our hover state and just get that lined up here so we could see it. All right, that's good. We're gonna duplicate this right there. And then we're gonna take both of those and auto layout them. And yeah, auto layout and then take this and duplicate it as well. So then what we could do is take this and hit delete member. And now that we have access to those icons, we can go back to our layers. We can hide this one and bring this one back. Delete member. And then this one will be, of course, sync members. All right, uh, we'll take this and then bring this one back. Perfect. Now we'll take all these uh, elements here and we will cha change them back to the default. And then finally, one last thing we'll do is take this, these two elements, and we'll add an auto layout there as well. That way it'll grow and expand like if we add more automatically. Awesome stuff. All right, so we're almost, we're not done yet, but let's go ahead and give a quick uh, look at what's happening here. Yep, they work. All of our interactions work so far. So we have one more final step to do, and that is to kind of bring these two elements into their own component as well. So we just take both and we will uh, create a component out of it. There we go. We'll add a component variant. Let's get this over here. By default, this is going to be hidden. This element right here. So you have to double click a couple times into it. And not only is it gonna be hidden, it's also gonna be moved up slightly so that when we use um, Smart Animate, it'll, it'll animate down. But you don't want it to be too much of a change. So we're gonna move it up, maybe like right there, and then also change the pass through to zero. All right, awesome. So now our default state, we switch to prototype and we can go ahead and take our button, move it down here, this is gonna be on click. And then we will also change this one. I think we'll take this element and make this the clickable element and change that all on, on click. Now, one thing I forgot to do on the first state is to change uh, instant to smart animate. Do the same thing real quick right here. Click on that and choose instant to smart animate as well. 300 milliseconds, ease out, that's all fine. Um, so now let's give it a final check. If we go over to our assets, and we'll click, he, no, is that the right one? I think it is. Let's hit play. Oh wait, Gary, what are you doing? It's this one. Sorry about that. Mental lapse here. Click it, it notice, how, notice how it animates down. Click that and it animates back up. So as you can see, we have a fully interactive with Smart Animate drop down button menu. Awesome, awesome stuff. All right, everybody, hopefully you enjoyed that. If you did, make sure to check out designcourse.com if you haven't yet already, because you're gonna be able to learn UI, UX design in an interactive setting with over 16 hours of videos, interactive UI design challenges, mentorship, and much more. So as always, make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet, leave a comment, like, all that good stuff, and I'll see you soon. Goodbye.